Google Sheets is a handy program that can be used to build countless tools. From your classic table to your versatile tracker, it's a gateway to numerical creativity. And what better way to energize our creativity with one of the most powerful functions available on the internet, the Google Finance function. This is a beautiful function that allows you to fetch current and historical securities information from Google Finance. If you've never heard of Google Finance before, this is a website where you can see global business related news and financial information hosted by Google. So with the Google Finance function, we can essentially pull live financial data into our spreadsheets like a stock's current price. If you're wondering where this is coming from, they get the financial data from financial exchanges and other data providers. Make sure to read their disclaimer page for more information on the origin of the data. So as you can see in this Google Finance tool I've built, I can search the ticket symbol for a stock, for example, Apple, and the real-time Google Finance function instantly fetches relevant information for me to monitor and learn about the company. If we scroll down, you can see how I can also produce a list of the historical stock price movements based on the time frame of my choice. I don't know about you, but this opens up my mind to a world of possibilities for what we can do. I even combined the Google Finance function with a Sparkline function to make these trendy line charts of the securities price trend based on the number of days. Let me walk you through this tool. So first, we have to enter the ticker for any financial security available in Google Finance. If you don't know the ticker, you can quickly search it on the Google Finance website. So for example, if I don't know the ticker for Microsoft, I just search the company name and this here is the ticker. Google Finance always shows the exchange symbol together with the ticker. You can write down the tickers without their exchange symbols for US based securities as it is the largest market in the world. For tickers based in other countries, you have to write down the ticker with the exchange symbol. For example, we could search for this potent company, Taiwan Semiconductor, grab the exchange symbol and the ticker, in this case it's a number, plug it into my tool and the functions show us all the data. Let's try Shopify in Canada, CSL in Australia, and even an ETF like iShares FTSE 100, which holds the 100 largest UK listed companies. The Google Finance function also lets us convert currencies instantly. Google Finance always shows us the numbers in the currency of the exchange where the ticker is listed. So for example, Apple is shown in US dollars and the iShares ETF of the FTSE 100 in pounds. As you can see on the currency table to the right, I can enter my desired currency to see the numbers automatically converted to the currency of my choice. If you would like to download this ready to use tool in light, dark and cyberpunk themes, make sure to visit my Patreon, which is linked in the description of this video. This tool is quick, uses live data and works magically. Now let's learn how to build it from the beginning. So we're going to go to Google Sheets and we're going to start a new spreadsheet. So the first thing that we're going to add is the screener table. So we're going to need information like the ticker, the name, current price, so here's where we're going to add the trend lines by combining the Google function with the Sparkline function. I'm going to add one more table here on the right and this will be the currency table. So we're going to use Apple as an example. And this is the ticker of Apple. If we want to find the tickers, we just go to Google Finance, the website, and we just search a ticker here, so Apple. This would be Apple's ticker. So that's what I write here, Apple. So for the name, equals Google Finance, D5, function four. So we're gonna lock this cell, comma, quotations, name, quotations, enter. And it gives us the name of the company. What we can do is drag it down and all we do is now change the attribute. So the second one will be price. And we get Apple's current price.
For all these attributes, I'm getting them from the Google Finance Help Center. So here it gives us all the syntax that we can use for this function. So it gives me several attributes I could use. So all I'm doing is choosing a few of these and adding them to my tool. In this one, we're just finding the currency that the ticker is using. So if it's a ticker that it's based in the US, then it'll be US dollars. But if we change one to say Canada, it changes to Canadian dollars. The market cap formula is gonna be a bit different. Equals Google Finance, D5, lock to sell. Market cap quotations, close bracket, and we're going to divide that by 1 billion. So now, what we want to do is add a round formula to get rid of those decimals. I'm going to add two decimal places close bracket and I want it to say billion at the end the letter B there you go and I also want the dollar sign in front okay now the P ratio earnings per share ratio so this is more for mutual funds to see what is their management fee and as you can see we get an error so to counteract this na that we don't like to see all i can do is add a formula if error to make it look nice so here at the end comma quotations remove the equals and then if it's an error it just shows me a dash and for example, if I change this to an ETF, some of the information is not available for ETFs. So what I'm going to do is add the if error formula. So if there's an error or I can't find the information, it'll just show me a dash. Okay, so we're going to work on the sparkline now. This is a really cool formula. So what I did before was I just merged these four cells. So we're going to do equals sparkline. Google Finance. We're going to select the ticker. And lock it. Comma. Quotations. Price. Those quotations. Comma. Today, close parentheses, minus the number of days that we want. So that's why we're 180 here. These are going to be the number of days, and we can change them whenever we want. Comma, today, and close parentheses. And there is the trend line for 180 days. So here we could change it to 500 days. And it shows us the trend line for the last 500 days. I like to see 180 and 365, but it's versatile. You can change it to whatever you want. And then we're just going to copy this and paste it here. And there you go. It's connecting now to this one. It's just like a second graph. We're going to work on the currency table now. This one's a bit more complicated, but what we want is essentially to find out what currency this is, but in our decide currency that we write down here on the top. Uh, name should stay like that. Current price would be, if error, open if. So what we're gonna do is select our currency. For what we're looking for, we're gonna lock this cell. And then the currency that we're using, we're gonna lock this one too comma, quotations, current currency, lock it, and quotations, space, quotations, and round, 
open parentheses, Google Finance, open parentheses, currency, close quotations, and D15, so the currency, lock that, and quotations, and a desired currency, lock it, and quotations, close parentheses, times D7, which is our current price, comma 2, because we're rounding two decimal places, close brackets, comma, and if it's an error, click enter. And currently the current price for the VRO ETF is 403 US dollars. And that equates to 341 euros. If we want to confirm, we can search it up in Google. So 403 US dollars is 341 euros, 341 euros. Okay, and I'm just going to copy this formula and then paste it where I want to see the currency change. Obviously, the change is going to be the same. It's the same percentage. So we're going to move down to the dollar change and down to the euro change. Volume is the same. The close price, the 52 week high, 52 week low. I'm going to write down a different formula here. So it goes like this equals if error. And then we just get the exchange rate for our currency pair, USD, Euros. So you can see if I change this to Canadian dollars, and we get the new pair and everything changes. Australian dollars, there you go. Now the market cap formula. So there's currently an ETF, so we don't have a market cap for that. But if we change this to say a stock like Virgin Galactic, SPCE, and we can see how the market cap is now in euros. And we're just going to copy the first formula. We're going to do it for the for the earnings per share, and the rest of them they should be the same. Same for expense ratio. And there we go. We've got the ticker screener, we've got the currency exchange, and now we're gonna scroll down and work on the historical data table. So for the attributes, we're gonna click this cell, D35, go to data, data validation, list of items, and we're just gonna write down the items that we want. Click save. And now we get a list of those. For start there, we're going to go to data, data validation, and click date. We're going to do the same for end date. Just a good way to select dates. I like to select them on a calendar instead of writing them down. So you just double click and it shows you a calendar. And then for the interval, I'm going to go to data, data validation, list of items. And currently for historical data, Google only shows you either weekly or daily. So now here's where we write the formula. So it'll be equals Google Finance. And when we write down the ticker, so what I'm going to do is link this to the ticker that we're looking on the top. So there is the data for the ticker. So here's a historical data based on the parameters that we wrote. I could do 10 to look at the history since 2010. And it shows, well, since the company started trading publicly in 2017. And there's the data. 
Okay, so that is pretty much it. Now what we're going to do is quickly format this to look like the initial tool that I showed you in the demo. And now I'm going to finally format this historical data table and we're going to do it with conditional formatting. So we're going to select top rows, click format, conditional formatting. So if the cells are not empty, we want them to have this background and be bold. And then for the others, we're going to select all the way to the bottom. We're going to do the same format, conditional formatting. I want to choose the lighter color, no bold, if they're not empty, done. So this is really cool when you, so if I change the attribute to only volume, because it has conditional formatting, only these cells are then colored automatically with conditional formatting. And it changes with the amount of attributes that I choose. So that is it. We've learned how to build a simple tool that allows us to monitor and fetch live information using the Google Finance function. Make sure to check out my Patreon or the Investments Tracker video to understand how we can take this function to the next level that will help us monitor and manage our money successfully. This is Planet Finance. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy learning.